Hello, fellow freelancers. Today I'm going to, well, first of all, I have a different angle today. I was told that I should have a higher angle when talking to you. And unfortunately, this shows the mess that I have behind me, but um, uh, also it looks crooked. The ceiling looks crooked. Well, hopefully it doesn't distract too much anyway. Sorry. Bear with me. As you can see, I'm learning as I go along. Anyway, today I want to step back a minute because I've been bringing you tips here and there of things I find useful. But now I want to start from what I call the pre-game. And this is the list of things that you need to start your translation career, your freelance translation career. So if you're thinking of, you know, quitting that nine to five job or if you're in school now, for any reason you're thinking of starting your freelance translation career now, then this is for you. By the way, just um, this is the only time I'm going to plug it, but I do have a book where I discuss this in more detail and the whole process. And I only mention that because in uh, there are four uh, topics that I have in this section of the book, and I'll only be discussing two in this video because otherwise it'll be long and drawn out. And the two that I discuss are the more ambiguous. The, the two that I won't discuss are having your personal website and having a user picture to use. But yeah, those are a bit more simple. Uh, but the two that I want to talk about today are uh, having an updated resume and a list of the services that you offer. Now we'll start off with uh, an updated resume. Now this is actually not the most important thing to have. The uh, most important will be the list of services, but the resume I'll start off with because most of you already have a resume and uh, so you can you know start with that. What I would do is uh, take whatever resume you have, but you know maybe tweak it a bit just for uh, translation. Now what you have now is probably something that you had from school or to look for any job and that sh you know shows you in the best light possible, which is great, but here you want to emphasize a couple of things. First of all, you want to emphasize anything that you have for translation and writing. Now this can go from blog posts from your personal blog all the way to published works. You know, whatever you have, you know, show it there. Especially if it deals with translation and you have experience in translation, obviously show that. And those are the things you want to emphasize. If you were, you know, part of this club or that club, or you, it shows you're an interesting person for this reason or another, that's less important. Especially when dealing with freelance, uh, the people uh, who are hiring you don't care as much as that, about that. What they do care is your experience and trust. Trust is a very important thing because chances are the person you're dealing with is not the end client. So the person you're dealing with has to send something to the end client and they need to send something you know trustworthy because their name is behind it and you need to show that you are that person. So, and what I mean by all this is basically show various ways that you are real, that they can reach you in the real world. So show that you have, you know, Facebook, LinkedIn, you know, a phone number, an address, whatever you feel comfortable sharing uh, will, you know, help them in seeing that you're a real person and you're not just someone who could disappear on them or something like that. And so, yeah, showing your track record and showing that you're someone who can be trusted are the two main important points to keep in mind with your resume. Also, as a general rule, I would say to remember, nobody likes to read a resume. It's always, you know, something that you have to do. So, so just get to the point, you know, and just say what you have to say. And then that's it. If you have extra stuff and you want to show people that you're a worldly person and you, you were part of the snowboard club or this or that and the other, then that's fine. But put that at the end, you want to start off with very simple to the point stuff that shows, look, this is what I've done. This is why you can trust me. So in a way, you know, I'm the obvious choice for your translation, right? So anyway, that's the updated resume and everyone, has their own resume and I'm assuming you're just going to build off that. And so just keep those things in mind. If, you, if you're starting from scratch, by the way, just go online and search for CV resume and you can find something you like. Um, but again, this is not the most important point. So don't waste too much time on this. Just make it something that's good, that can show quickly what you can do. And then that's it. Then move on. The second and uh, the most important point, I believe, is the list of services. Now for the list of services, uh, this is the main thing that your client is going to concentrate on. Now, put yourself in their shoes. Say you are a person who has a furniture warehouse company as a client and you need their website translated into Spanish. Now, this is probably just part of what you're doing, right? You're probably translating into many different languages and you need a Spanish translator or you're head of all their marketing material or the revamping their website and you just need a, a Spanish translator. So you as the translator need to put yourself in their shoes and that way you can come up with a good strategy. 
And so what is the correct strategy? Do you list as many languages as possible so that any type of translator you know, can find you? Do you uh, list as many specialties as possible? Or do you narrow it down to show you're very specialized? Um, my advice here, and of course, this is my opinion. You might feel differently. If so, feel free to let me know. But my method is to be very narrow in a macro sense while being very wide ranging in a micro sense. Uh, that doesn't make any sense. So <laughs> let me um, let me try to explain. Uh, the macro sense, I mean, is the, the languages that you offer, right? So um, if they're looking for a Spanish translator, they're going to look for a Spanish translator. Now you might think, okay, I can translate Spanish, but I can also translate uh, Portuguese and Catalan and Galician and uh, Basque and French and Italian because they're kind of similar and I can do what, and you know what? I studied for a while in Poland, so I can do Polish as well and some German. Uh, yeah, you don't want to do that. You don't want to list that many languages. My advice actually is to this narrow it down. If you can do Spanish, put Spanish in English. Uh, and then, you know, you can put Spanish uh, from Spain and Latin American Spanish if you want. But keep it at that, you know. And then if you're from, like, Barcelona, you can say Catalan as well or something like that. I would just try to keep that very narrow. Because when someone's looking for you and they see 10 different languages after your name, they're thinking, okay, no one is fluent in that many languages. So how good is this person in these languages? Like, are they just overconfident about it or what's their deal? And you don't want them to think that. You want them to say, okay, I mean, a Spanish English translator, boom, this person is ex exactly what I need. However, well, the next thing to look at is, is, uh, is the specialties, you know? So say, because usually you can choose or you want to at least detail, you know, what you're good at because you'll have certain specializations like finance, legal, uh, engineering, construction, marketing, whatever it is. And here is where I tend to be very broad, right? If I'm looking for someone to translate this furniture warehouse company's website, do I look for someone who has good marketing skills, who has good furniture skills, who has good website skills? I mean, you know, chances are I don't know all that much. So if I see a really good Spanish to English translator, I'm going to contact them. And so I tend to kind of cover my bases there. And, um, and I can show you what I have from my pros account, I guess. Basically, I have quite a few specialties, finance and marketing and legal and economics and geology and stuff like that. And then they, they also give the option also works in and there, you know, I have plenty more transport, textiles, um, accounting, tourism and travel, religion, poetry, etc. Um, now, these are all ones that I can take on a case by case basis. If I receive a piece of poetry that I don't feel comfortable with, I can always say, oh, no, I'm sorry, I can't, I, you know, I can't do this at this at this time. But at least it gives me the option. And chances are the person hiring you isn't even 100 percent sure either. And they're going to kind of look to you. So they're going to show you this furniture warehouse website and be like, look, you know, do you know furniture terminology? And you, and you can say, look, this is mostly marketing terminology, quite frankly, because they're trying to get new customers. I can handle that. I do marketing. So hopefully that made sense. In a uh, macro level, just be very specialized. Just have a few languages that you feel very comfortable with. Also, because in the long term, you'll be churning out better quality translations, and this will bring more money over time because people will see that you're a good translator and refer you, hire you again, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but then for the specialties, be more broad because this gives you more possibility of uh, you know people finding you if they have an option for miscellaneous or other or general always click on those as well because if when you're hiring chances are you just click general or you know if you're kind of lazy about it you'll just click something neutral like that to find someone so i that's what i would recommend and well that was pretty much it and you know the only other points i had were the photo and the website I can go through quickly the photo. The main point is not to waste too much time on it. Okay, you don't need to win a beauty pageant. People want a freelance translator. If you have a phone or if you have photo booth on your computer, take a picture now. If your hair is decent, you look semi in order, then that's fine. I mean, look at me when I do these videos. It's um, And then for the personal website, there are many different ways. If, if you can get your own .com and everything, that's perfect. But otherwise, there are various other options that you can research. So that was pretty much it. And if you have any questions or comments or anything, you can definitely let me know. Otherwise, feel free to subscribe, like, thumbs up, all that good stuff. And, um, and yeah, if you subscribe, obviously, as I come up with new things, you'll be getting it right on your YouTube list. And hopefully some of this is useful and so it can help you out. Thanks. Bye.